Good evening. So tonight I am discussing shortly, and uh, this is going to be a short video, I hope I'm going to discuss the current development version of the Riva package. So Riva will soon, I don't know exactly when, but soon be updated to version 2, and it's going to use Vroom, which is another package from our studio under the hood. So what this means is that now Reader will read data much faster because again, it's based on Vroom. So if you've tried Vroom before, uh, it's, it reads in data very, very fast, much faster than any other package. Maybe not data table. Well, I don't know. Uh, I think some benchmarks show that Vroom is faster, but I guess it might depend maybe on the data and maybe on some options that you can tweak. But basically both Vroom and data table are probably the fastest packages that you can use to read in rectangular data. So um, Reader 2.0, which is still in development, will be released and will be based on Vroom. And what Vroom does uh, is that it actually doesn't really read in the data, but it reads in the data lazily, meaning that it first indexes your data and then only reads in what you need to uh, whenever you need to, to perform a computation, it reads in what it needs to perform that computation. So if you don't need to compute over the whole file, um, this works very well because then it will just read in the data that you actually need. So for example, um, I have read my um, this data, enwiki.txt, which is a text file. So it's not a CSV file. It's a text file uh, that uh, weighs 13 gigabytes. So read lines is a uh, function that is included in Reader. This version now is based on, or, or rather it uses Vroom under the hood. So what happens here is that it doesn't actually really load that data into memory. And actually I could also maybe show you my, my RAM usage. So as I said, this is a 13 gigabyte uh, file. And you see that my memory is at three gigabytes out of almost 16 right so that's pretty cool it's a file that uh, has almost 60 million lines so this is the english wikipedia well a part of it it's not the whole thing it's a part of it so this is a head of the file so uh, we have something with uh, well <laughs> that guy is everywhere <laughs> so we have uh, some the head of the file which starts with anarchism that's the first article it read in this 13 gigs well it indexed this 13 gigs in two minutes Okay, almost three, or two and a half, two and a half minutes. Uh, and now, if I need just a head, well, um, reader or read lines in this case will just, uh, yeah, will, will just, uh, if I do a, let's do the, the tail. So the tail works the same way. So a tail will only load the, um, the last lines. Okay, it won't read in the whole file to just get to this. If you don't use uh, Reader 2.0, if you use or if you use the base read lines, okay, if you use read lines, which is the base function, this will load in all the data in memory at once. So it, this will you this will use up uh, all your RAM. Or even if it even if the file fits in memory, what can happen is uh, you read in the file, and as soon as you start computing on it. You will at that point run out of memory because you know all the all these uh, functions that will compute over it will also require memory, and you probably won't have enough unless you're on a huge workstation. Um, so now, let's let's imagine that I want to do something like this. So let me just uncomment this, and let me maybe have a head. So I will run these lines here, the line below these lines below, I will run them only on the head, so on the first six lines. So this is going to work uh, without much issue. Okay, so if I go on let uh, flex, what I want to see is the frequency of each character. So not just letters, but each character. Uh, I'm doing this for another project. Um, so I need, I, I, I just need to know, you know, how often each character comes up. And I want to do that for several languages. So this now is for English, but I will do that for other languages as well. And uh, we'll see uh, how that goes. But this is unrelated to the, what I want to show you now. If I remove this head, this will compute over the whole file. And here the problem is, uh, well, because I'm computing over the whole file, 
at this point my data set here, EN Wiki, will get completely loaded into memory uh, because it needs to be loaded into memory for this to work over the whole file. Okay, This is a problem because I'm going to run out of memory. So I've tried it, of course, and I run out of memory. So this is not good, and this eats up all my RAM. Oh, also, the script, I will. Uh, you, you can find it in the description, a link to the script. So the solution, what is the solution? So I don't know if this is the best solution. It's the solution I came up with. It's the one that seems the most intuitive to me, but maybe there's an easier solution out there. It's to write a function that will call this thing, okay, on chunks of the data. So I will only read in the data in chunks, and then I will, for each of these chunks, which might be, I don't know, 10,000 lines, 100 lines, whatever, I will uh, map this function or use this function on this chunk and then on the next one and so on. The advantage is that if I do that on chunks of the data, as soon as I'm done with one chunk, I go on the other one, okay, and because I only read in the, the, the lines that I need, well, the once I'm done, the, lights, the lines that I read in before, those get discarded. So my memory does not fill up. So I, I load in maybe the first 100 lines, I, I do my table of frequencies, then I load the next ones. But when I load the next ones, what will happen is that the previous ones are going to get discarded out of the memory, so uh, my RAM will not fill up. So this is my function. I will not really comment it, but it's quite, I mean, it's basically the same thing as here. Um, the only difference is that I, well, I work on a chunk of my data set. Okay, I have uh, my data set, a chunk start and a chunk end. Uh, and then uh, I, I just convert this to a tuple. That's the only difference with what I had before. So instead of having this, which is, I guess, a named list, I have a, a tuple which makes it easier to, to just manipulate later on. So I will do chunks of size 100, so 100 lines. Um, you could do more, I guess. Uh, there's probably uh, an optimal number or an optimal size of chunks, I guess, but who cares? Um, so I'm going to do, I'm going to, so this chunks is a data frame. Well, yeah, that wasn't very smart. I should have shown you ahead, ahead of the chunks. So it's a data frame with two columns, start and end. So the start is, well, one and then 101 and then 100. Oh, actually, this is not good. It should be 102. So I need to correct that. I won't do it now, but it should be an easy, an easy fix. But it should be 102 because now I'm getting, I'm going to treat lines, these lines, two times. But that's not very important for what I want to show. Now that I've done that, what I want to do, so this is a data frame, I want to add a new column where I map my function here, compute letter flex, over these chunks. Okay, so this is a trick I've been using in a lot of my videos and in a lot of my code, uh, even, you know, at, at, my, at my job. So it's a, a trick, or rather a workflow I really enjoy. So um, well, check out the other videos where I discuss that, uh, because I think it's really nice if you're not familiar with it. So the idea here is to take this data frame, add a new column that I will simply call frex, and I will map my function. Maybe let me. Yeah, I will just map my function over the chunk start and the chunk end, and en wiki is my data frame. So remember, my data frame now is going to be sliced, or rather my not my data frame, but my my text file is going to be sliced. First 100 lines, next 100 lines, and so on. So I just need to correct this, this issue here, but that's not important here. Um, the other thing I do is I use the possibly function to create a new function called uh, possibly compute letters. This is because I had some trouble. So my file, I don't know if it's corrupted or, or if the encoding is wrong, but I have some um, so-called... Um, I think they're called, they called bobs, but I don't remember. But I think it's something byte. I don't remember exactly. I, I don't remember the acronym, but it's called bombs. Uh, so basically, if I understood correctly, uh, I have some letters which are encoded with multiple bytes instead of just one byte. And this apparently can happen if your file is encoded in UTF-16, um, which I don't think it is. My file is UTF-8. For some, but for some reason I have this issue. So if I so basically these lines that contain 
those weird characters. And you know, maybe there are maybe some uh, you know Japanese characters, something like that. I don't know. That's um, maybe maybe that doesn't work uh, with uh, local my local encoding, which is UTF-8. I don't know. Anyway, just to um, avoid these lines, I use possibly. So basically, on these lines, my function errors, but with possibly what will happen is if there is an error just return in it and don't stop so just, you know go to the next line and, and so on and go to the next chunk so this is a, also a nice trick because it doesn't stop the execution if there is an error okay and later on you know once i'm done running this i can check um you know i can check uh, how many lines have an a how many how many of these problems are so then i'm going to use the um fur package to uh, run this in parallel because uh, that's 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 nice. So for if I remember correctly, let me. So what did I do? I run this. Okay, I need to run this. I need to run fur. So fur. I think it's plan, and it's called multi process equals eight. Let's use eight cores. I think that's how you do. I haven't used fur in some time now, uh, so maybe I'm remembering and then it's future map so future map two because map two because i'm mapping over two uh, inputs i'm mapping over the chunk start and uh, the chunk end let me just format this a little bit better before i run it yeah let's let's see if this is going to to work uh so it's running or oh, it's running in sequential so i guess it's not maybe multi-process uh Oh no, it's not. Sorry, I remember now. Let me let me. Well, but it's running. You know, it's running, and uh, of course, RAM usage is going to increase because I'm computing. So this is normal, but it should not. Uh, I should not run out of memory. Hopefully, am I running in parallel or not? Because I see a lot of my CPUs. No, I'm not running in parallel. Um, but yeah, so. This should max out, I don't know, around maybe, I hope it will, I hope I won't run out of memory. But this should not um, max out all my RAM, hopefully. Let's see, oh, it seems to have maxed out around 9, at around 9 gigs. Yeah, so it's still very slowly increasing, so that seems... To be so, actually, it's a good thing that it's that I wrote a mistake and that it's not using my eight cores because if it was using my eight cores, then I guess I would have run out of memory because then I would have eight processes that would be doing this thing in parallel. So, uh, you know, maybe I, I maybe I cannot run this in parallel, but as you see, it's, it's not, um, it's not, uh, you know, eating up all my RAM, it maxed out at 9.3, uh, which is good. So this means I, I can run my uh, I can run this this thing. Uh, maybe you know I could instead of uh, of having a chunk of size one hundred I could have maybe less. I could maybe even run it line by line. Actually now it's decreasing, but my swap is increasing. Yeah, I mean this seems seems to be working well. So this is pretty cool because um, again if we were using or if you're still using the uh, reader one you know, one point something. The, not this new version, then this wouldn't be possible. As soon as you read in the file, you would run out of RAM. And, or if you would use read lines, you would run out of RAM as well. So the, the base function read lines. So just to finish, um, while this is running and we're monitoring it, there's another very cool package. Uh, oh, and, and before that, of course, I've used read lines, but read CSV or you know, read CSV2 would also, they work now this way as well. So if you have like a 15 gigs, uh, CSV file, this would work the same way. So you could lo load it the CSV file lazily and then compute over it uh, by chunks like this. If you, um, so there's another package that I want to discuss very quickly. I've already mentioned it several times on this channel, which is the disk frame package. package. I will link it in the description. I also wrote a blog post about it. So it works in a different way than, uh, than Rida and Room. Uh, because it doesn't load in the data lazily, rather it uh, loads in your data and splits it automatically by chunks and it creates a new folder on your disk uh, with hundreds or even thousands little files. And then whenever you compute over the, your data, uh, even, you know, you could run summary statistics, 
create a plot or even generalize linear models, which is really, really cool. Uh, this will, you know, this frame will just handle that automatically. It will just load in your data it needs, will uh, save in the temporary results, and then, you know, you will uh, get your, uh, your uh, parameters of your generalized linear model. And, uh, and it works very well and very seamlessly. So this is another package you might be interested in. So um, there's now Reader, which works like that. And there's uh, this frame that I think is also worth, uh, uh, it's definitely also worth a look. So thank you for watching. I need, as I see, I need to do some corrections, this chunks problem, and uh, you know this is running in sequential. I actually need to. I think I know now. It's uh, it's instead of plan instead of multi process. I should have written workers. I think workers equal like something like that. Anyway, um, I will put this code uh, as it, as is online. So you will have to correct yourself. So that's your homework. You will have to correct the chunks and uh, also this thing. But if you don't want to run it in parallel, just use map two instead of future map. And actually, I not even sure I could run it in parallel because as you see I'm at 9.5 gigs now and uh, if I had eight processes running in parallel I would have probably you know run out of memory anyway thank you for watching uh, I hope you enjoy it check out the reader package uh, so this is the development version the uh, I, I guess reader 2.0 will come out soon this is I think this is really huge it's a really huge update and it will definitely make R more accessible. So one, one thing, a lot of my uh, co-workers uh, that have, you know, been using SAS for years, one of the things they say that SAS handles much better than R is this kind of thing, you know, this kind of medium-sized data. You can throw a 10, 15, 20 gig, gigs file uh, at SAS and SAS will handle it. That, that is true. That is true. Well, now with Reader and with Disk Frame, um, you know, this is these are game changers. These two packages, I think, they're game changers because they really um, solve one issue that R had for a long time, which was you know handling data that doesn't fit in memory, or even if it fits, they it would have you know been impossible to compute over. So anyway, uh, have a good one and uh, see you next time.